Hello and welcome into the Birds and Braves podcast. I'm Luke Winstall. Thank you all for tuning in. Today I had some questions about the Atlanta Falcons and their offseason. I wanted to review it, talk about the draft, how they addressed their offensive line, and also how they didn't really address their defensive line. To talk about the Atlanta Falcons today, I brought in Nick Cellini, an expert on the Falcons, the co-host of mid-morning local Atlanta radio station show Cellini and Domino on 680 The Fan. Here's my interview with Nick. Nick, thank you for joining me on the show. Luke, my pleasure. How are you doing today? Doing very well. How are you? Are... I'm doing great. I'm looking forward to having a conversation about uh, everything. So, ready when you are, man. Fire away. For the Atlanta Falcons, it seemed like the main focus of their 2019 offseason was investing in their offensive line. They paid pretty good money for two big free agents. They got two first-round draft picks trading up, getting two offensive linemen. Are you satisfied with the investment in the offensive line, and what do you expect from that position going forward? I will say this. I was surprised, and I'll also say this. They better produce, and they better produce right away. If you're going to draft two offensive linemen in the first round, they're going to be plugged into that right side. I know they're running with the second team at OTAs. That doesn't mean anything right now. If they are not starters on day one, then Dan Quinn and Thomas Dimitrov are going to have a huge problem because if you can't beat out, if you're Caleb McGarry, if you can't beat out Ty Sambrello, if you're Lindstrom and you can't start on that offensive line, and I know they sign guards to pretty decent free agent deals, first-round picks have to step in and play right away. If they don't, it sets back your organization. And we know this is a make-or-break year for Dan Quinn and Thomas Dimitrov. Those guys have to step in and play right away, have to start right away. For me, I really like the investment on the offensive line. I'm in the same boat you are there. The only disappointment for me was the lack of attention and lack of addressing on the defensive line. What did you think there, really kind of betting on a bounce-back year from Vic Beasley and McKinley to take a step forward and Claiborne to come in and contribute like he did in his last year in Atlanta? What do you think there on the defensive line? Are you okay with what the Falcons did, or were you looking for more? No, I'm very concerned. I mean, I, I think when you look at Vic Beasley, you've got a guy that I don't think at times cares enough, and then you have a guy in Tack McKinley who cares too much. In other words, he gets frustrated. I think he gets down on himself when things aren't going his way, and that's why he has a tendency times to disappear in games. Dan Quinn said he's going to be hands-on, and I know that Vic Beasley is going to be here for the mandatory minicamp. That was a really bad look, him not being here. And I know Dan Quinn, if you read between the lines, we talked to him last Friday. Dan Quinn is not going to come out and blast Vic Beasley, but you could hear it in his voice. He is not happy that Vic didn't show up. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that with him not showing up to OTAs because you understand Julio Jones and Grady Jarrett don't show up. They're in contract negotiations. They're Pro Bowl players. They've proven themselves. But for Beasley coming off a year being ranked number 103 at his position, I was surprised. Yeah, I agree. And like I said, for him not even to show up and then not go to the pass rush uh, summit that Von Miller was having in Las Vegas, it just doesn't make sense to me, especially when you have guys like Ricardo Allen and Keanu Neal and Devontae Freeman all there coming off of surgeries and coming off of injuries. They don't have to be there either, but they are. I think it was just very important for Vic Beasley to be there, and he wasn't. And I, I think that he let a lot of people down. I'm thinking for Atlanta right now, I like the pieces they have on both offense and defense, despite not addressing that defensive line group really much at all. I think the team has a shot at a deep playoff run. I like Again, I like the pieces they have, but do you feel like the window is closing for the Falcons with all of the contracts they have coming up in the next year? It's a good question. I, I think that it's going to be more challenging. I, I think to me, the key is with this offensive line, the ability to run the football because – it sounds kind of strange to say, but when you look at the way they were able to score during their Super Bowl season, the defense wasn't on the field quite as much, and it put more pressure on the opposing team's offense, so they were able to kind of pin their ears back and get after the quarterback and gamble a little bit more. So in, in that regard, I think they're going to walk hand in hand. I think, again, if Devontae Freeman can stay healthy and be that guy that we saw during the Super Bowl season, then I agree with you. If they have a couple of more injuries and depth again becomes a challenge, especially at that running back position, then I think they're going to have some issues. 
Last year for the Falcons, we saw DeMonte Casey step up big time, have a breakout season with seven interceptions, among the best in the NFL. Who do you think could be a breakout player or a breakout star for the Atlanta Falcons in the 2019 season? That's a really um, a really good question. I, I'm hoping that it's going to be Vic Beasley. When I say breakout, I mean comeback star, because uh, if it's not him, then I'm not really sure whom it's going to be. I, mean, I, I think that they have to stay healthy, and I think that as strange as it may seem, maybe it's going to be the rookies on the offensive line. I mean, the parallels are there between what the Falcons did and what the Colts did when you talk about bringing in a bunch of young offensive linemen and instilling an attitude in this team. So if I had to say one or two players, uh, and it's, it's hard to quantify because you can't do it by stats, but I'll still have to go with these rookie offensive linemen coming in with a nasty, mean attitude and, again, changing what the approach is going to be on offense. And I'm wondering, I, I'm wondering, I have some faith in Vic Beasley and thinking that he can come back, especially with Quinn as the defensive coordinator. What to you would be a good season or a good enough season from Vic? I think he's got to have double-digit sacks. I think he has to be an impact player, cause a few fumbles, just put consistent pressure on the quarterback. Something he he hasn't been able to do over the past couple of years. If he's able to do that, then, then maybe tack on the other side can benefit from that. I, I don't think it's unreasonable to expect double-digit sacks or at least say that's what's going to constitute a successful season from Dick Beasley, at least 10 sacks. Now for the Falcons, I talked about, I mentioned those contracts that are coming up. If you had to keep one of Grady Jarrett, Deion Jones, and Keanu Neal, who would you pick? Oh boy, I'm going to have to go with Deion Jones. I mean, as much as I would hate to part with a guy, like Grady Jarrett or Keanu Neal. I mean, Deion Jones, he, you saw it when he was out last year. I mean, he's a guy that makes that defense go, and, and there's not a lot of three-down linebackers in the NFL anymore that can do what Deion Jones can do. I mean, how many linebackers can make the interception that he made on Drew Brees a couple of years ago, baiting a guy like Drew Brees who's done and seen everything? I mean, for that reason, uh, I got to go. If I had to pick one, I got to go with Deion Jones. What do you think is the ceiling for the Atlanta Falcons team in 2019? I mean, I don't think it's unreasonable to say they can win 10 or 11 games. I mean, a 10 and 6 season, I don't think is something that would or should shock anybody. I mean, they should be good enough offensively and should be at least consistent enough, provided they can stay healthy defensively to to win 10 games and and maybe make it in as a wild card. I mean, again, if, if I had to say winning the division. I don't know if they're better than the Saints, but I think, again, they can be the second best team in this division. That's all the questions I had. Thank you for your time, Nick. Anytime, sir. I'm here for you. You have my number. Give me a call. Awesome. Thank you.